Hi, my name is Dr. Kevin Johnston, and I will be showing you how the new Pro Suitability Modeler can be used to find suitable habitats for deep sea coral. I am a product engineer at ESRI in the Spatial Analyst Group, focusing on suitability modeling and distance analysis. Deep sea coral is a diverse and valuable resource. Here are some images of the coral. Coral can enhance biodiversity and provides essential habitat structure for the fish and invertebrates. But coral grows slowly and are vulnerable to bottom disturbances. To understand the environmental conditions that promote coral growth, NOAA ran a maximum entropy model, better known as MaxEnt, using the locations and environmental conditions in known coral beds. We want to see if we could use the output from NOAA's MaxEnt model to guide us in building a raster overlay suitability model to identify the most suitable coral habitats using the new suitability modeler available at 2.6. We will focus on the sea pens. Let's see the suitability modeler. I have it open already. The suitability modeler is based on the idea that modeling is an iterative dynamic process. At each stage in the modeling workflow, you receive feedback from interacting panes, plots, and maps. This immediate feedback will aid in defining model parameters and will likely result in better decisions. I will provide a brief overview of the general steps for creating a suitability model as they relate to the modeler. First, you need to identify the criteria. Next, since the criteria are on different measurement scales, you transform them onto a common scale so they can be combined. Certain criteria may be more important than others, so we will weight the criteria relative to one another. Then the weighted transform criteria are combined. Finally, you locate the best areas, in this case, the best habitat for the coral. Let's build the model. In suitability model, sometimes it can be a challenge to identify the significant criteria, in our case, the things the coral are responding to. We will use the same significant criteria from the NOAA's MaxEnt model. We have entered them into the suitability pane. They are dissolved oxygen, bottom temperature, slope of slope, mean grain size, sand, bottom salinity, and depth. If I add a depth of 100 to a salinity of 5 to a percent sand of 25, we get 130, which is a meaningless number relative to the coral. So we must put the criteria values on a common suitability scale. In our case, it will be 1 to 10, with 10 being the most preferred. As you saw earlier, you transform the values within the criteria in the transformation pane. Click the button next to the criteria to activate the transformation pane. We'll first transform depth. Since depth is measured on a continuous scale, we will apply a continuous function. What this means, with each meter increase in depth, the C pen's preference continuously increases. There are many different functions that can be applied. The transformation pane helps guide you to pick the optimal function for your criteria. On the x-axis is the depth. On the y-axis is the suitability. A histogram shows the occurrence of each depth value. And the transformation function, the blue line, is overlaid. By default, the shallow locations receive the highest suitability and then sharply decreases. But the default MS small does not capture the C pen's preference to depth. We need to apply a function that best represents the preference interactions of the coral to the criteria. It isn't a straightforward process to accurately fit the transformation function to the preference for the criteria. We will try to mimic the output response curves from each criteria from the NOAA's MaxEnt model using the functions in the transformation pane. In this case, we will initially apply an exponential function 
we'll invert it and we'll set the base factor to 0015. We'll calculate. As I calculate, the um, different plots will update and so will the map. In this case, the transformation pane says the deeper areas are more preferred going to less preferred. You can see the shallower continental shelf in red, which is least preferred. Areas in yellow show the continental shelf break moving into areas of greens, the deeper locations. The yellow areas in the Northwest are various canyons carved by glaciers in the Gulf of Maine. And you can see the Fundian Valley um, leading into the deeper waters. The second criteria is sand. Again, we will attempt to mimic the response curve for sand for the NOAA, from the NOAA model. In the sand criteria, sandy areas are less preferred by the sea coral. We'll change the default MS small to a small function. Notice the uh, plot is updated. We'll change the midpoint to 40 and the spread to four. We'll calculate. Again, you can see the uh, areas with less sand are more preferred and then quickly decrease to the areas uh, least preferred and the higher sands. Notice as we refine, you can see the Hudson Canyon um, likely resulting from the Hudson River and you can actually see the canyon walls right here as it's cutting through into the ocean. The channels flush out the sand, thus preventing sand to accumulate. In the center are the Nantucket Shoals, the Georges Bank, and the Browns Bank. These are um, submerged sandbars, therefore they're red and not preferred. We continue this process for each criteria. I'll only highlight a few. Show bottom temperature. The bottom temperature, we applied a large function with a point spread of two. You can see the shallower waters and the, where the water is coming up from the Gulf are warmer. In the Northwest, the water is colder because it is fed by the Nova Scotia currents going into the Gulf of Maine. Near the Browns Bank, the colder waters are coming down from Labrador and are mixing with the warmer waters. Next criteria we'll look at is the transformed slope of slope. Slope of slope, we applied an MS large function with a multiplier of 0.2. You can see at the continental shelf break that there are many canyons and drop-offs. Also in the Northwest, once again, you see the steeper canyons in the Gulf of Maine popping up. Each of the transformation functions was applied to replicate the NOAA's maxent response curves. As we applied each transformation, we could validate the parameters by identifying the biological principles driving the results. At this stage, all our criteria are on a common scale. However, some criteria are more important than others, so we will combine them and weight them relative to one another. We will use the same relative variables of importance that NOAA's MaxEnt model used to define the criteria weights in the suitability modeler. Turns out depth was the most important, so we will apply 31 weight. We'll uh, apply it, calculate. Other weights you can see, medium grain size at 16, Sand at eight, bottom salinity at one, oxygen at 19, and bottom temperature at 13. You're noticing three areas are popping up as um, being important up in the um, Gulf of Maine, along the continental shelf, in this one area here. Let's see how good we're doing. I'm going to turn on the actual C pens. 
Notice the C pens, as I turn them on and off, are in the greener areas. So we're doing quite well. Remember though, preservation is one of the goals for the C pens. Which areas would be most critical to preserve? We will move to the implementation of the locate step in the suitability modeler. We want to save 95,000 square kilometers in two reserves. And since um, the suitability is more important in the shape of the preserve, we can control that through the shape utility trade-off. I've run it previously and the results. Notice as the, I turn it on and off, the two preserves are in the greenest areas. I'll turn on the C pens and you can see that um, the two reserves are getting the majority of the C pens uh, that are already in existence. Further refinement can continue while providing dynamic feedback to find the best model fit. As you saw, the suitability modeler provides immediate feedback through panes, plots, and maps, allowing you insights to identify the best locations for the coral habitat. Through the feedback, you can explore and explain the biology driving the model results. We want to thank NOAA for their assistance they provided to the project and the work they are doing to save our oceans. Thank you for your time.